apologies for not being there and thanks a lot for allowing me to participate even in this ghostly way. Let me thus begin. I know that the world is not only possible, she is so great. On a quiet day, wrote Arundhati Roy, I can hear her breathing. The University of the Earth, the Tierra, is a small alternative university in Oaxaca, Mexico, in which we learn in freedom doing what we want to learn. We have particular teachers for diplomas, fully immersed in social movements. In the Tierra, as Simon Gillis wanted, to study is a joyful activity of free people. In January 2017, we started a monthly virtual seminar in which collectives from six countries and from a dozen urban and rural spaces in Mexico participate. We call it Other Political Horizons, Beyond Patriarchy, Capitalism, the Nation State and Formal Democracy. After sharing some readings and listening to some intellectual activities, intellectual activists, the seminar was occupied by the voice of very diverse groups and collectives who shared their adventures of transformation. What I want to present here is actually the fruit of our reflection and explorations and what we learned in the way as we began to interact with those initiatives. First of all, we became aware that the world falls apart around us. The patriarchal way of thinking and being which happens inequalities and injustice and devastates all living things has become increasingly counterproductive. It is losing credibility. For thousands of years it was perceived as the natural form of social existence. It is now continuously questioned. By privileging competition, hierarchy, ignorance of the other, domination, control, violence and war, it established a regime based on hatred of life. Its projects, appropriately we call it dead projects, find increasing resistance. The modern era is coming to an end due to the erosion of, the th of its theoretical and political pillars. Individualism show, shows its clarity. People start to escape from that prison. The truths and ways of knowing that until recently supported the predominant ways of being and thinking have been dissolved. As a Western civilization project of colonial stamp, modernity is vanishing with a great crisis of meaning. The design of the nation state is also in agony. The need of sovereignty dissolves, along with the national borders that were the arena for capitalist expansion and today are an obstacle to globalized capital. Though the rituals of nationalism and its unifying functions continue, they have lost legitimacy and mobilization capacity. Even in those countries where its most dangerous expressions of fascist nature have been appearing recently. Capitalism could have also come to an end. It reached its internal, in its internal limit and can no longer reproduce itself on its own terms, buying labor power. But this is not good news because it represents a slip to barbarism. It cannot prevent its self-destruction, but on its way destroys everything. As a mode of production becomes a mode of dispossession, it no longer needs a democratic facade. Governments resort to public force and unleash the violence with all kinds of pretexts to replace its vanishing political power. Racism, sexism and homophobia, inherent to the dominant regime, are becoming increasingly evident. The rule of law becomes a kind of illusion under the declared or undeclared state of emergency. The despotic nature of the democracy finally becomes evident. 
All these undermine the regime of representation, which operates by inertia and with its usual rituals, but has lost any real substance. The neoliberal model of globalization collapsed. Internal struggles between old and new powers establishes a multipolar system with great tensions and instabilities. The ideology of markets and the hypertrophy of the financial sector, two major foundations of globalization, become counterproductive. The dismantling of the democratic facade stimulates increasingly despotic forms of government, which reflects the growing ungovernability and also the inability of the political classes to peacefully practice the function of government with the complicity of most mass media lies. The so-called post-truth becomes people's of domination. These images of the current situation were a good in our seminar to explore a radically different social landscape. The stories of collectives and groups openly challenging the dominant system. We thus launched an initiative to identify those groups in Mexico, to document their experience in their own voices, and to circulate among them the information so they could learn from each other. After documenting a good number of these initiatives, we thought we would organize an encounter among all of them to define together what to do. We assume that to give visibility to such experiences, evidencing that it is possible to start breaking with the system, even if the system is still there, could inspire the millions of discontents who have not discovered how to escape from the system or do not believe it is possible. The exploration soon became a surprise. Everywhere we found people in movements challenging the dominant regime. They had felt that they were in a prison and in the dead end. Just to survive, or for other motives and reasons, one day they said, basta, enough. And they jumped the wall or opened a hole in it and started doing something else, something different from what was prescribed. Little by little, the initiative took shape. Obviously, they did not escape from the planet. The monster is still there and surrounds them and harasses them. They have to deal with it on a daily basis and still maintain some dependencies on the market and the government. But what they began to be started to include more and more areas of their immediate realities. When their experience began to intertwine with other initiatives, new vital and political horizons emerged. The new world is for the people involved in these experiences a series of paths that are made by walking them. They start with a rupture. Escaping from a prison means first of all getting rid of the weight of a way of thinking and feeling which manifests itself in the language used Words are doors and windows of perception, and those that we use in normal conversations are carriers of the dying world. What people are doing requires sentir pensar differently. What leads to shaping new words or giving new meaning to those involved. That is their current endeavor. They are creating life options, ways of being, thinking, doing, different from the established ones, which do not fit into the constituted framework and cannot be expressed in their words. I could not find, for example, a good translation of some words that are today well rooted in our experience. Senti pensai expresses the obvious condition that you cannot think without feeling or feel without thinking but we have been constructed with the opposite condition. I have been unable to say Saint Pippensar in proper English. Free thinking does not sound as well as Saint Pippensar in Spanish. The same happens with Entramado Comunitario. 
which alludes to a way of communal existence that constitutes a, constitutes a solid we, a tapestry of knots of nets of relations to people that were born and raised as a we, not as individuals, and also people that have already escaped from the individual condition in which they were constructed. The expression communal web, a literal translation of that expression, cannot properly grasp such condition. Our initiative is not about utopian exercises, because what they do has already a place in the world. They acknowledge the radical uncertainty that we all are experiencing today. The future has no longer a future, as Sakamben has observed. We can no longer hang our lives from some promised land. They thus connect their desires with reality, giving concrete materiality to the dream. To invite collectives and groups for our initiative, we prepared a list of seven groups of activities or attitudes that we found in our initial exploration. Each line of this list was born from the observation of a concrete experience, but none of the collectives we know practices everything included in the list. We wrote it in the first person plural so that those who read it could tell us if they felt or not represented in it. Here is the list. First, taking care of human and non-human life is at the center of our entramado comunitario and tends to determine our structure and functions. This attitude includes the following. We give special communal attention to the gestations, birth, and upbringing of children, which occupies a central place in the organization of daily life. We re-establish or establish for the first time the central position of women in the communal social organization of the upbringing of life. We seek to eliminate behaviors that destroy or contaminate life. We perform compensatory actions when we must destroy something. We resist any attempt to destroy human and non-human life and try to regenerate what has previously been destroyed or contaminated. We recover and promote self-mobility, feed, bicycles, as well as animal energy, minimizing the use of motor vehicles. We try to give plants and animals appropriate care. We vigorously dismantle all forms of violence against women, children, and people who do not feel well in the usual definitions of normality. We continuously collect knowledge from different sources, both traditional and contemporary, for our creative interaction with life and with inanimate beings. Our fixed position of formalized and empirical knowledge is generating the historical knowledge of the struggle that we apply in our practices. Second, we organize ourselves horizontally and we do not admit power over people for racial, economic, social, political, religious, or any other reasons. We base our organization on horizontal, on horizontal harmonization avoiding control, domination, and exploitation. We have flexible mechanisms of coordination and organization of activities which give temporary powers with clear mandates to fulfill those functions. We bear for and respect hierarchies without power based on love, experience, wisdom, and service. We recognize and appreciate especially the competences derived from the service to the community. We believe in the idea of building a world in which many worlds can be in place, suggested by the Zapatistas. Third, cariño, the special kind of affection you feel for your loved ones, is the mortar, the stuff, which forms, shapes, and supports our organization. We were born of cariño, love, care, not of an ideology or a common goal although we share, we share horizon about our way. 
Not all the different organizations feel Cariño for each other, but Cariño links all the groups and collectives as are part of it. We also feel Cariño for the organization itself, be it by tradition, by history, by impulse, or by destiny. Cariño is the fabric that sustains our organization and the substance that allows us to transform our conflicts. Cariño shapes our structure, mechanisms of operations, and manifestations of existence. We feel and show Cariño towards people and towards the organization, but also towards plants, animals, and things, and the hills, the water, the soils, not as abstract entities towards which no feeling can be felt, but as a specific reality. Four, we seek that joy and creativity be the center of our activity and the organization of daily life. We reduce to a minimum rutinary and boring working structures. We resist the work form of our activities. We seek that the very idea of working disappears from everyday life. The activities or functions that nobody likes have a rotating character so that everyone devotes most of the time to activities that are joyful and interesting. Fifth, we promote, multiply, and strengthen the condition of being a we, as persons, not signals of relationships, as collectives, as communities, as peoples, as political affiliations, expressing a common resistance for a shared transformative influence. Six, we adopt the premises of sufficiency and abundance as organizing principles of the activity. We actively resist the economic organization of everyday life. That is, we resist the premise of scarcity, the logical assumption that we have unlimited wants, needs, and complete needs, which creates the economic problem, the allocation of resources that organizes and rules modern society. We give contemporary form to the traditional, traditional premises of sufficiency and abundance, that is, the assumption of the generosity of natural gifts, which we do not consider commodities, and the wisdom of living with what one has. Seven, we shape the interconnected skills of, the, of daily life with verbs that give back to us autonomous agency, eating, feeling, learning, instead of the dependence on institutions that now impose food, health, education. If we resist a food system that makes us intoxicated and sick, generates dependence on the market and the government, and destroys nature and culture, by restoring the centrality of everything related to eating, from cultivation and preparation with the greatest possible self-sufficiency to the very activity of eating as a joyful activity for family and community enjoyment. Here, we resist the professional medical dictatorship while respecting and strengthening traditional forms of healing and those who practice them and organizing the appropriate juxtaposition of traditional remedies and contemporary technologies. Learn, we resist the impositions and discrimination of the educational system while we promote and strengthen the freedom to learn and its autonomous practice. Setting, we resist the systematic destruction of the environment and autonomous capacities while we cultivate and strengthen the art of inhabiting and the reappropriation of the place. Eight, we organize ourselves politically based on inherited norms and those that we formulate autonomously, resisting those imposed on us by the market of the government, and we build step by step legal political forms that are based on agreements and harmonization of dreams born of our plurality. Ninth, we practice and try to extend the dialogue of saberes, the different ways of knowing, eliminating its arbitrary hierarchy. This list of features of the entramados comunitarios that we prepared in the first phase of our exploration 
did not describe anyone in particular. Those who know the Zapatistas may acknowledge that most of the attitudes and behaviors of the East are present in the Zapatista world, but even they don't follow every one of them. Obviously, we began to call a new world experiences that, strictly speaking, are not because of the links they have with the current world. Even the Zapatistas, who are undoubtedly the most complete case of an alternative, maintain links with the market and the state. But they do not belong to the current world, neither mentally nor materially, and are a living proof that another world is possible. We think that the area of eating illustrates well what is happening. Eduardo Galeano, the Uruguayan poet, wrote that in these times of global fear, whoever doesn't fear hunger is afraid of eating. Most billion people will go to bed today with an empty stomach, and everyone else knows that most of what is called food in the market is a toxic stuff sickening many people. They also know that they cannot expect governments or corporations to solve the problems that they themselves have created and continue creating. Eating healthy depends on us, as Via Campesina argues. According to its definition of food sovereignty, we need to define by ourselves what to eat and produce it. And this is exactly what is happening. The small, the small farmers, mainly women, feed 70% of the world's population, which means that agribusiness, which owns or occupies more than half of the planet's food resources, only feeds 30%. The autonomous organ production of food extends everywhere and demonstrates its immense potential. We have already identified and documented a number of radical and chamados communitarios. At the beginning of 2019, we will need to define what we will do to articulate our efforts and become visible, to see if the discontents can be inspired by our experience. In these months, while we were advancing in the documentation of these alternative experiences, we discovered similar initiatives in other countries. Bikal Sangam, for example, has organized a conference of alternatives in India. With them and other friends, we are currently organizing a tapestry of global alternatives, which is to articulate, quote, the vigorous movement that rejects capitalist, patriarchy, racism, the system of castes, individualism, and anthropocentrism, and adopt horizon beyond the structures of oppression. Close quotes. This movement includes initiatives in specific sectors, from sustainable and holistic agriculture, community-led water, energy, food sovereignty, solidarity and sharing economy, work and takeover of production facilities, resource knowledge commons, and interethnic peace and harmony, to more holistic or rounded transformation, such as what being attempted by the Zapatistas and the courts of Rojava. The global tapestry of alternatives is an initiative seeking to create solidarity networks and strategic alliances between all these alternatives on local, regional, and global levels. It starts in the local interaction among alternatives to gradually organize forms of agreement at the regional, national, and global scale through diverse and light structures defined in each space, horizontal, democratic, inclusive, and non-centralized. The initiative has no central structure or control mechanism. It spreads step by step as an ever-expanding, complex set of tapestries, constructed by already existing communal or collective webs, organized as alternatives to the dominant regimes. Each of them, autonomous within itself, with other such webs, a global tapestry of alternatives, is about creating a spaces of collaboration as a change that extend the alternatives wherever they are, until the point in which a critical mass of alternative ways can create the conditions for the radical systemic changes we need. For us, in Unitierra Oaxaca, in Mikal Sangam, or in the tapestry of global alternatives, the new world has already been born. And Dati Roy is right. We can hear her breathing. 
We also know, however, that all alternatives are at risk, even those such as the Zapatistas or the Rojava courts, which seem more consolidated and complete. The wave of barbaries that runs through the world today put them in danger, as well as the human species, species itself and all forms of civilized life. Learning to see the new world, discovering it in our own realities and contexts, cleansing the contaminated case of the regime in agony has become today the condition of survival. Thank you.